Hey boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches and I am happy to be with you today on another exciting episode. Today, wearing the Grand Seiko cap that I received as swag. And uh, before we move into the mailbag viewer question of the day, I think we should get the quick fist watch check out of the way. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And here she is. Today, I'm wearing the Rolex 50th Anniversary 43mm Sea Dweller, 126600. And um, yeah, so that's what we've got on today. Now, we've got viewer mail, so I'm going to pick up the computer and I'm going to read to you what, uh, what Matt has got to say. And he's got kind of an interesting question. Hello, Mark. I have been watching your channel for just over a year now. You are my favorite watch YouTube channel. It's working. My evil plan is working. Thank you so much. I have a great relationship with my local Rolex AD, and I have bought two watches from them. A GMT BLNR in March 2017, which, uh, as you know, is the discontinued, the now discontinued Batman. And I'll put a picture of mine in right here. This past December on my birthday, just before Christmas, I got a Submariner date from them. Of course, I'd love to have a Daytona, but I was told maybe two to five years. Yeah, the Daytona is like kind of top of the heap. I think that's, what do you think, guys? I think the Daytona right now would qualify as the very hardest to get uh, Rolex in steel. I know the, the um, Sky Dweller in blue dial steel is also super hard, but I think the Daytona is probably harder yet. What do you all think? Tell me in the comments. Oh, and subscribe to my channel and buy my book, Let Dogs Be Dogs, available in bookstores and on Amazon now. I don't know why I bothered having him put me on the list for the Daytona, because honestly, I could never really afford it. I have a good job, but by no means am I rich. It was a big purchase for me just to get the two that I have. Now, here's my question. I called and talked to them yesterday, and, and they asked if I would be interested in trading my GMT Batman for a Daytona. Ooh, ooh, that is an interesting question. What a proposition. We're gonna, we're gonna finish the letter, and then we will talk about all the implications of that issue. He was interested and put me and said uh, that he could put me down for uh, the next Daytona to come in. We did not settle on a price for my GMT, but he said he would give me fair market value. I'd love to have the Daytona. And then he goes on and on. So I think we've gotten to the meat and potatoes, the gist of this, which is should Matt trade a discontinued BLNR for a Daytona? First, let's take this from the authorized dealer's perspective. Let's say they pay $14,000 for that BLNR. And then they go ahead and they put it in the case for $17,000. So they stand to make $3,000 on that watch. And then what they do is they sell the Daytona to him for its retail cost, which I forget, but I'm going to stick it right in here. I think it's around $12,000, $12,500. But here it is, here. Okay, so, uh, and what they would do is they would then get that same amount of money for the Daytona, regardless of who they sell it to, but then they can get that extra two, three, four, who knows, maybe even $5,000 by marking up that BLNR. Now, Matt says that the authorized dealer said that they would pay him fair market value for that watch, but Matt, I, if I were you, I would, uh, the first thing I would do would be to ask the authorized dealer, great, what's fair market value for my watch? Because I think they are a lot likelier to offer you around $12,000. But when you next go into the store and you see it in the case, it's not going to be thirteen dollars or $14,000. They're going to have it up there for seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000. That's what I think. Um, so what should you do? You know, I think a ton of what you ought to do depends on how you feel about the Daytona versus how you feel about the BLNR. So first... If you could get more than you paid for the BLNR, and I'm sure you can, and then you can just turn that money right around and put it into a Daytona and, um, and, and pocket, let's say, you, let's say even that you only pocket a couple thousand extra dollars. Um, and so basically what I'm saying is by the time you are compensated for what you spent on the BLNR, you get enough money to go ahead and pay for the Daytona and you still have a thousand or two thousand dollars in the bank. Ooh, well, I think you're dollars ahead. So from strictly from the financial perspective, I think it's a really good deal 
if they will give you a minimum of, let's say, $14,000 for the BLNR. If they want to give you under that, I don't think it's a bad deal, but it's no longer an amazing deal. But that's strictly financially speaking. Um, I, I mean, right now, you own a watch that you paid, uh, call it $9,000 for, that it's worth maybe $15,000, $16,000 on the regular used open market. Um, whereas the Daytona, you'd be buying somewhere in the $12,000 range. And if you got the Panda, it's instantaneously worth like $24,000. So from the financial perspective, the Daytona is the way to go unless they just want to completely steal your BLNR. I, I don't even see how, even if they want to just give you $12,000 for your BLNR, I know I'm backtracking a little on my financials, but you know it's still not a bad idea. But again, we're talking strictly financials. And the watch is not a strictly financial issue. So I know that you didn't really intend to like flip your BLNR, but here you are deciding whether you know you want to keep your Batman or flip it for the Daytona. I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to depend entirely on how you like that Daytona. What do you think of it? Is that a watch that you've been fiending after? Now, I know you say you've always wanted it and you say that you have this opportunity and you'd never normally be able to afford it. If, if that Daytona is singing to you, then run to that AD and say yes, because they win and you win, and that, my friend, is what we would call a good deal. Um, now, I think that you have to have some familiarity with the Daytona, so tell them to, that you would like to just try, the, the, try one on if they've got one in the used case. Borrow one from a buddy. I just think this is a really big deal for you to do completely sight unseen. Um, and it would be nice if you had strapped a Daytona onto your wrist at least once in your life before deciding to trade your now discontinued Batman for that model. But you know, as I've been making this video, I've been trying to find reasons why you shouldn't do it, and I'm finding those really difficult to come by. So basically, you ought to do it, um, and the only reason would be is uh, that you'd be sorry if it turned out that you liked your BLNR, but on a daily basis wearing the, the Daytona if you just don't like it. Be aware it's going to wear a bit smaller than your Batman, but if you don't care about that sort of thing, you're certainly upgrading because the, uh, the Daytona is certainly a more complicated, more expensive, and more prestigious to watch, to own, especially at this time. Now, before I let you guys go, I want to consult the Oracle, the Magic 8-Ball. Should Matt trade the BLNR for the Daytona and hopefully pocket a couple thousand bucks in the process? Well, the Magic 8-Ball says, cannot predict now, but Mark from Mark Vlogs Watches can. Matt, you should do it. Let me know what happens. What do you guys think? Should Matt do it? it? Took me seven or eight minutes of waffling to figure out, yeah, he ought to do it. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. Goldberg, peace out. Paint the sky.